I'm going to be tackling treating oligometastatic prostate cancer in the PSMA PET era um, from a medical oncology perspective. Here's my conflict of interest statement. Oligometastatic disease is limited in extent and defined by the number of metastatic sites that are present. Uh, and the number that has been chosen is five sites. It was initially defined in 1995 and then revisited in 2011. And the hypothesis that underlies the definition is that metastasis-directed therapy may be effective for this subset of patients. And as has been alluded to already, this is a growing clinical dilemma due to the advent of PSMA PET CTs. The number of lesions we know do, does not define survival or outcome with metastasis-directed therapy. When we see a gentleman that has four metastases, or if we end up finding six metastases, there's no difference there in what their um, ultimate outcome is going to be. Um, Increased sensitivity of imaging changes our number of lesions that we count, but it does not change the underlying biology and ultimately the underlying prognosis of the disease. And looking at other cancers, such as colorectal cancer, we know that the combination of the seed, the tumor intrinsic characteristics, and its interaction with the soil, the environment that the metastasis is, defines a long-term outcome. When we're approaching ge gentlemen with uh, oligometastatic prostate cancer, the determinants of both survival and our therapeutic approach as of now um, are how they present clinically, do they have de novo synchronous disease or metachronous disease after prior local therapy, what genomic alterations do we detect by germline and somatic DNA sequencing, and then um, host factors. This can be comorbidities, age, um, or just desires and expectations from the patient. Now, in my mind, PSMA PET positive, conventional imaging negative prostate cancer is also just called biochemical recurrent prostate cancer for the past 20 years. And I use this PSMA PET CT from our institution to highlight that. And what you can see is on the CT component, which is the bottom one pointed to with the arrow, there is a small sclerotic lesion in the vertebral body. Likely 15 years ago, we would have ignored it and just kept moving on and kept an eye on that. Now, um, with, we have a PSMA PET scan, we have this highly avid lesion that aligns with the sclerotic lesion, we now have a metastasis. And why this is important is that we know, and, and Christian did a really nice job of highlighting this, but studies from 20 years ago tell us that men with biochemical recurrent prostate cancer do very well for a long period of time. Um, again, study from 20 years ago shows us that at 15 years out, um, over half of men are alive from cancer, and the prognosis becomes even more favorable if the time from surgery to biochemical recurrence is greater than three years, shown in the Kaplan-Meier figure on the right. I'm going to use two cases to highlight a number of thought processes that we have encounter um, and some of the nuances of oligometastatic prostate cancer. Um, these patients are both from my clinic. Uh, the first is a 69-year-old gentleman, past medical history of high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and he was initially diagnosed with high-risk localized prostate cancer and underwent a radical prostatectomy in 2017. At the time, he had grade group 5 disease, PSA was 11, and he had seminal vesicle invasion on pathology. Two years after that, in 2019, he gets salvage radiation for his initial biochemical recurrence, and they give him six months of ADT along with it. We see him in clinic in 2023, um, and his PSA is 1.8. His PSA doubling time is short at three months. And we get a PSMA PET scan, and on the SPECT image, you can see on the, he has a right posterior rib lesion and a right scapula lesion consistent with metastatic disease. Now, as has been alluded to, the historical standard, if we were to call this biochemical recurrence prostate cancer, is intermittent ADT. Intermittent ADT was non-inferior to continuous ADT in an old study from the 2000s performed in Canada. And again, a key takeaway from the study is eight years out, um, only or over 80% of patients were still alive on this study. Now, there's an, a desire both among patients as well as providers to try to defer initiation of hormone therapy, and we now can do that with metastasis-directed therapy. We have a couple studies to look at um, that guide us of what to do here. The first is the STOMP trial. STOMP trial was a small phase two study of 62 patients who had less than three lesions on a choline PET-CT. Um, they were randomized to either metastasis-directed therapy 
or surveillance. And in that study, metastasis-directed therapy um, reduced the hazard for time to initiation of ADT compared to surveillance by 40%. There was also the Oriole study, similar um, study on the whole, 54 patients, less than three lesions on conventional imaging, stereotactic radiation versus surveillance, and again, we see um, that there's a significant reduction in the hazard for disease progression by doing something, metastasis-directed therapy versus just watching. Now, I would argue that, based off the slide I just showed, both of these studies have an inferior control arm. Um, the control, the standard of care here was intermittent ADT at the time, but it does accomplish a goal for both patients and providers to delay initiation of hormone therapy. Now, a study out of our group, and I'm biased here, I think this is the most useful of them all, but it is the EXTEND trial. Um, this was led by uh, Chad Tang, one of our rad onks. Um, and this is really asking the question of, does metastasis-directed therapy have a role when you layer it on top of intermittent ADT? Again, phase two study, 87 patients, less than five metastases, amenable to metastasis-directed therapy on conventional imaging or an FDG PET. So none of the studies I've said so far have used a PSMA PET. And what you can see in the Kaplan-Meier figures on the right is that there's a significant reduction in the hazard for disease progression when we add metastasis-directed therapy to intermittent ADT, and similarly, um, time to eugonad um, disease progression as well. In my mind, this study establishes metastasis-directed therapy plus intermittent ADT as a superior option to intermittent ADT for oligometastatic prostate cancer by historical imaging, and we've seen similar benefit in the ARTO trial in the metastatic CRPC space. Now, kind of moving on to hormone therapy, what should we do for this gentleman? Um, if we were going to think about him as low-volume metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, the by-the-book board answer is if the standard of care is two years of ADT plus an AR path, or sorry, I said two years, it's ADT plus an AR pathway inhibitor, uh, and one could argue it should be indefinite. Now, if we think about this as biochemical recurrence in 2025, um, as has been alluded to, the EMBARC trial has established um, that we should not be using ADT alone. If we're going to take an intermittent approach, we should be using ADT plus enzalutamide or enzalutamide monotherapy. Now, in my opinion, the optimal duration for a man with PSMA PET negative conventional imaging disease is entirely unknown right now. I think, and I'll hopefully convince you guys that it should be finite, um, that it should be something in the range of six to 24 months, and it should not be indefinite. So for this gentleman, uh, my, my, my clinic, we, did, we kind of took the approach. Uh, we did six months of uh, ADT and abiraterone for him, and we did stereotactic radiation to both lesions. He got 10 months of eugonad PSA-free survival. After that, his PSA started to rise. It's now stable at 0.8. It hasn't changed in about six months. We got a PSMA PET scan, and we can't see any PSMA avid disease at this time, so we're just watching. All right, so second case now, highlighting a second way we can have oligometastatic prostate cancer present, which is de novo. This gentleman was from Colorado, came to see us at MD Anderson. He was a healthcare provider. Um, he was very healthy, thin, 70-year-old guy. PSA was eight, grade group five disease in the right prostate. And then, as we can see on this PSMA PET-CT, he has a left acetabulum metastasis as well. We get uh, a biopsy that confirms that this is adenocarcinoma, and we do somatic um, and germline uh, DNA next-gen sequencing, and it doesn't show anything that's going to change our behavior at this point. So the first question is, how should we approach local therapy when we have a gentleman who presents with de novo oligometastatic prostate cancer? And I'd argue that we can look to the STAMPEDE trial for guidance here. So the STAMPEDE trial, I think most of us are familiar with it, but 2,000 patients with metastatic hormone-sensitive disease on ADT who were randomized to radiation to the prostate or just continued ADT. The Kaplan-Meier figure on the right is the outcome for the primary endpoint, which was the unselected cohort, and there was no significant difference by adding radiation to the prostate. Now, there was a planned subgroup analysis shown in the forest plot below, where it seemed that there was a treatment effect heterogeneity benefiting the patients with low volume disease by conventional imaging here. And so this established radiation to the prostate as a standard of care for low volume metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. But, and I think it's, it's been widely adopted both by us at Anderson and across the US, I'd argue it's not as 
clear here um, as we all think it is. Um, the HORAD study was also did not meet its primary endpoint for the unselected cohort similar to Stampede, and it was inconclusive in the low volume group. Piece one asked the same question from the ADT plus abiraterone saying, hey, we've evolved and added an AR pathway inhibitor, and again, they saw no difference um, but in survival by adding radiation. So it's not as clear cut as we think, but it is widely adopted at this point. There's no role for pr prostatectomy in de novo oligometastatic prostate cancer, at least supported by high level trial data. Um, we don't have definitive data to date. There was a phase two study um, led by Brian Chapin and Anderson that we're awaiting publication of. There are two large phase two, phase three trials that are ongoing and hopefully will give us more answers about the role of prostatectomy, one in SWOG and one led by Dr. Kim at Yale. What about hormone therapy when we're dealing with de novo oligometastatic prostate cancer? So standard of care here should be ADT with an AR pathway inhibitor. Um, you're expecting a 35% reduction in your hazard for death by adding in that AR pathway inhibitor, and you've got all the options listed here, and likely darolutamide um, these days uh, after the ARINO trial. I would argue there is no role for chemotherapy for the vast majority of patients in this setting. And when you're thinking about duration, you could argue it can be anywhere from 24 months all the way to indefinite. I personally favor 24 months in the vast majority of these patients um, and giving them the opportunity for UGO-NAD progression-free survival. And if we think, you know, if this was conventional imaging negative and it was five years ago, um, we would have just treated for, with 24 months of ADT plus abiraterone plus radiation based off of all the stampede data that we have anyways. So for this case, we did two years ADT plus abiraterone. We did radiation to the prostate and because we're being aggressive, we also did metastasis-directed therapy to the left acetabulum. Uh, to this day, his PSA is undetectable because he got two years of hormone therapy. It's taken him quite a little while to get his back T back as well. I will acknowledge that um, the aggressive approach here did cause some consequences as well. He has a number of insufficiency fractures in his pelvis that are causing him big impact on quality of life because he was a really active guy. So there are ongoing studies where we're looking at the uh, kind of the role of treatment for oligometastatic disease defined by PSMA PET CT for eligibility. There's the Aristep study and Indicate study. I will say we have the Aristep study open at Anderson, and this is really challenging to identify these patients in your in your clinic and then get them to a trial. There are also studies that are looking at the role of stereotactic radiation as metastasis directed therapy for PSMA PET lesions, and this is that same design where we're asking what's the utility of adding ADT, kind of the backwards of the way we think it, um, have done it traditionally. And then looking forward, there are other new challenges facing, facing medical oncologists um, in the oligometastatic space, and one of those is oligoprogression. Um, there are different avenues you can take to developing oligoprogressive metastatic CRPC. You can either have metacritus where you've never had uh, prior history of METs and then develop metastatic CRPC. Um, or you can have induced, which is, I think most of us see more frequently, where you have progression in a limited number of sites in a patient who has a known history of polymetastatic disease. And there's potential utility of metastasis-directed therapy over escalating up to chemo or radioligand therapy here. Um, I think we all do this quite a bit in our clinics. But what we don't know, again, is the underlying biology. Is that lesion you're seeing, um, the driver metastasis, that when you do your metastasis-directed therapy, you're really going to help the patient long term? Or was that just the tip of the iceberg and you're going to radiate that spot and they're going to come back and have PSA rising and multiple new lesions? So this is a whole new space. There are many studies ongoing here, and we have some open at Anderson as well. In conclusion, oligometastatic prostate cancer is a growing dilemma. Um, driven by stage migration from PSMA PET-CT. De novo versus metachronous presentation drives treatment more than the number of lesions that are counted. There's an unmet need to understand the underlying biology in the context of contemporary treatments. There are roles for stereotactic radiation as metastasis-directed therapy and ADT plus an AR pathway inhibitor for finite durations. And my main message for everyone that I hope you take away is please avoid over-treatment if the patient was conventional imaging negative. These patients can do very well for a long period of time. Thank you.